So we're interrupting our normal programming with our Yaris because we were going to show this dyno tuning session in our track prep video because I thought, well, when I put the new surge tank and fuel pump in, we would just turn the car back to the 321 kilowatts that you saw in our last dyno tuning video. But last night, Ryan sent me a text message and said your Yaris is starting to make a little bit more power than it did last time. I started off impressed, then surprised, then scared, then happy, then excited, then back to... In fact, I went through every emotion there was as I kept getting dynographs of more and more power. Ryan, what the hell happened here last night that I missed out on? Previously, you know, the, the uh, map sensor was maxed out. We had the fuel system maxed out as well. <laughs> um, and effectively, that 320 kilowatt pass that we did on the dyno last time was, in a, in a way, a Hail Mary where it was... We were, we were tapped on everything. There was, there was no fuel left on the table. There was nothing. So now you've put a new map sensor in it. We've put a, a new fuel pump and uh, a surge tank set up in it as well. And we're now actually able to tune the car on that boost level and actually get some results that we're, we're sort of expecting and, and start to actually log and you know, increase timing and change cam timing and things like that. Um, so I guess we, we started off and went from 320 and worked up from there. So in our last tuning video, I asked our viewers, do you think we're the most powerful Yaris in the world as opposed to claiming it? Now, I think the fact that we went 122 mile an hour on 270 kilowatts, and now we have 352 kilowatts or 475 horsepower at the hubs, I'm claiming it because I've heard claims of 500 from a car in the UK with no dynograph, no quarter mile time, and I'm not disputing it, I'm just saying it, there's no proof there. And that's probably calculated engine horsepower. So for you people watching in the UK, I'm saying, you know, 475 at the hubs, I call that 500 the engine, but there are plenty of dynos that would probably calculate that out to more like 550, if that's the number you want to hear. But 475 horsepower at the hubs now in this car, that's got to go, what, 133? 130 plus. 100. If it doesn't, <laughs> some other problem. If everything holds together, we should see a 10 second Yaris, right? Like if it's... Yeah, absolutely. And that brings us to our next question, is holding together. When you're on the dyno, obviously you've got a coolant pressure sensor in the car. Um, you're monitoring, I guess, the duty cycle required for the boost to go up, which is obviously helps you work out if back pressure is kicking in or not. Did the car show any signs on this power level? It didn't last time. Is there any signs anywhere that says I'm struggling or is the car good? So at this power level, there's nothing that is telling us that we're at the <laughs> limit or approaching the limit. So we don't have things like, we don't have coolant pressure problems. We don't have boost duty cycle increasing, as you mentioned, which could be an indi indicator of back pressure. You know, exhaust. Yes. Um, we don't have any oil pressure problems, no fuel pressure problems. There's no evidence that this car can't continue making more power or you know, live at this power. See, I thought potentially lifting the head would be an issue, and obviously you have the plastic reservoir that's sealed. If it was pressurizing, we would see it, right? We would see, Absolutely. and we'd lose coolant, and there's a coolant pressure sensor, so we're not lifting the head. No breathing coming through the oil air separator. Nope. Um, there's no detonation, there's no misfiring, there's, there's nothing, nothing going on to give nothing you a hint. So I guess the next question is, what did you do, I guess, as a safety strategy for tuning? We mentioned this last time, but let's go over it again, because everyone watching is going to say, that's a ticking time bomb. That's going to blow up. But what, what are the strategies that you use to try and, I guess, minimize the risk, because we're not out to destructive test? Effectively, there's a couple of things that we did to you know, manage the power or manage the torque um, that the car's producing in order to you know, make the results repeatable, and also so that we don't, we don't think we're going to break anything. So effectively what we know is that the car is happy at 500 newton meters of torque. We've done countless dyno runs at that, you know, at that torque rating. So that means that we can effectively hold 500 newton meters across the, across the rev range. That we know that that number works, so we, we said let, let's stick to that number. So what that means is that we can actually start to manage the boost um, that the car is running in order to maintain that same torque number across the board throughout the rev range. Let's say, for example, at 4,500 RPM, we might only have 30 pounds of boost in it because the car's making 500 newton meters of torque. Now, as that sort of goes up, and we're at, let's say, for example, 7,000 RPM, that actually goes up to around about 35 PSI to maintain that same 500 newton meters of torque. Now, maintaining that 500 newton meters tells us, okay, we've, we've done countless dyno runs, We've you know, driven the car, everything else, and it hasn't broken so far. Now, does that mean that it won't ever break at that power? <laughs> it's anyone's guess. We're in uncharted territory, and we have been for you know, a substantial amount of time. Because let's look at it. 
what power did the car come in with? And what, the, what power is the car now making? It's We're actually almost double. Like a, a Yaris makes anywhere between 175 and 180 kilowatts at the front hub's dead stock, and we're at 352. So it, we're very close to double the horsepower, which yeah. is, like that's crazy. I it, mean, it's, I even, I'm now in this land of just like, I did. Yeah, and I mean, not many manufacturers would make a car that, you know, is strong enough to take twice the power. Yeah. Um, if we look at Subarus and Evos of years, years gone by, you know, 350 kilowatts is like unheard of. It's just not possible. Mm. I mean, the cars were, it had built engines and all sorts of things by this point. Um, and we've got a 1.6 litre three cylinder Yaris <laughs> making 350 kilowatts on a stock unopened motor. It still is boggling the mind that it did it. And like you said, it, it's not pressurizing and pushing water out and overheating and. Yeah, there's no noise, there's, there's nothing like that. So, so one of the other things that we can do is we use the knock sensor that's on the engine. And it actually not only detects knock, but we also detects engine noise in general. So we can actually watch throughout a run what the engine noise or background noise is of the, of the engine. And when you actually advance the timing on the 85 to a point where it goes past MBT, it may not necessarily knock because the, the fuel on the 85 is quite knock resistant. However, noise levels in the car can actually pick up. So we can, we're actually able to monitor that as well. And there's, there's again, no <laughs> evidence of any noise levels increasing. <laughs> it's absurd. <laughs> Could we make more power now based on the fact you're saying there's no issues does that mean are we tapped or is there more left or did you just say you know what that's enough for now or yeah. is there more left and obviously we've got Kelford camshafts coming next what will that do as well yeah so as you can see right at the very top here of the rev range you can see the torque starting to fall off we did you know we introduced a little bit more boost up top to try and counter that now the results weren't amazing. Did it pick up power? Did it pick up torque? Yes, but it's not quite as much as we would have liked for the amount that we put in. So what that means is that potentially, you know, the, the engine's not as efficient as it needs to be. So potentially we need to swap out some camshafts, put in some larger items like the Kelford cams, you know, that, are, that have become available and we'll be able to fix this torque cup and sort of try and try and get back to that 500 newton meter limit. Now, when I'm talking about this limit, that's not, you know, we could put 36 pounds in the car from the whole way and it will actually make more power earlier and it will make more power everywhere else but again we, we fall back to that problem where we don't know what torque the car can take so we could push this part of the graph out but this wouldn't change because the same boost right, yeah. and all we're doing by pushing that out is just more risk on the car really exactly right. but going back to how much stock stuff there is we haven't even changed the inlet manifold throttle body nothing sump, pump, studs, head gaskets, everything. Like it's valve springs only because we worked out earlier we had to. I mean, obviously we changed the exhaust manifold to something that's freer flowing, more efficient. And we're still re using an intercooler that realistically is a bolt-in replacement intercooler, the yeah. plasma one, so it's doing really well. Where do we go after camshafts or do we just, <laughs> do we just like go, you know what, let's just put, let's just run this, try and get to be the first into the tens, yeah. put camshafts in it if it's still going and, and then worry about the rest later, or, or is there, have we, do we even have a plan after this? Because I'm already well past what I thought we'd do. <laughs> so for me, there's a couple of different things that we can do. So if we're just, we're, we're, as we've mentioned, we're, men we're trying to get the first 10 second pass. So that's fine, we continue to, on the pathway that we are, we're probably making enough power to do it now. Probably. If I, I don't run a 10 on that, it means either the gearbox is blown apart or I forgot how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> So we know that everything's good to, to achieve that goal. Now, if the goal is to go faster in a drag, at a drag strip, that's fine. What we can do is we can start pushing this, this torque level up. We can put camshafts in and try and make more peak power where, we, where you would use it on a drag strip. If, let's say for example, you change and you say, look, we've run a 10 second pass. We've done what we wanted to achieve with that. Let's concentrate on some circuit stuff and move back to, to that sort of angle. What I would suggest is changing the rear housing on the turbo and actually trying to move this power band further to the left and make it more drivable out of the corners and stuff like that. Now in doing that, you may sacrifice some of that peak power, but you'll get you know, droves back earlier on, which is obviously more you know, tailored to a circuit-based car. 
So if the drivetrain holds and we can get a 10 second pass in, the focus will switch back to getting ready for world time attack next year in club sprint class. So you could see us actually reduce the power, put a smaller rehousing on it. But for now, we're really enjoying this quest to be the first into the 10s and potentially see if camshafts can give us some more grunt later. So um, that's where we're going, right? Exactly. I, all I know is this is getting absolutely out of control. And um, come on guys, someone else join the party, would you?